Hi, this video will be a brief overview on the function and structure of the small intestines. The small intestine is a very important bodily structure after the stomach, which is broken up into three major portions. The duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Each of these each of these proportions of the small intestine serve various functions and exhibit different features and characteristics. First, the duodenum is the, is the location of CCK and secretin secretion. Secretin was actually the first hormone discovered, and CCK regulates the excretion of pancreatic enzymes and bile acids. The jejunum is where most of the water-soluble vitamins are absorbed, whereas the ileum is responsible for B12 absorption, bile acid reabsorption, and the absorption of fats and fat soluble vitamins, which include vitamin A, D, E, and K. So, although there's a big variety of distinctions between the three portions of the small intestine, they share a couple of common characteristics. The first, the small intestine is responsible for digestion, absorption, and secretion. These three main functions for this part of the alimentary tract is crucially dependent on the surface area. So the small intestine, many ways in which it tries to increase the surface area for both absorption and secretion. First, there are bands, there are in the small intestine, there are bands or layers of tissue similar to the rookie of the stomach, which are called pilica circularis. These bands double and tri triple the surface area, <coughs> the surface area of the small intestine. On each of these bands and throughout the surface of the small intestine are villi. Villi are structures that increase the surface area of the small intestine in which each of these little dots will be the size of one cell and the, in the middle of each villi would be lymphatics would be where fat can be absorbed or system capillary systems as well as as well as the immune system response to keep to make sure that the things we absorb aren't harmful for us in addition on each of these little cells each individual cell there's something called the brush border or the microvilli, which are in indentations and just increased surface area that improves its ab absorptive capability. The vast majority of the small intestine is comprised of epithelial cells and, secondly, of goblet cells. Goblet cells are excretory cells which secrete the mucus which in the duodenum can be used to can be used to neutralize the acidic pH of the stomach acids. And in addition to these epithelial cells which absorb proteins and nutrients, there are also something called Peyer's patches. Peyer's patches are these patches of immune cells which have a critical response in determining how the body responds to things in the small intestine. In the small intestine and large intestine, there's a variety of bacteria and other substances that we must live in symbiosis with, and also must protect ourselves from food poisoning, toxins, and a lot of other environmental hazards that can come through the mouth. Unlike, I'll describe later on that the small intestine actually absorbs the majority of nutrients in its most basic components, as amino acids, mono monosaccharides or individual fatty acids, but these surface cells, M cells, and the and the pyrus patches are a unique place in which larger structures can be taken in and the small intestine and the immune system can look at it and secrete antibodies, IgA, to counteract their capabilities. So first and foremost, the small intestine is for digestion. There are couple of main structures, there are a couple of main types of nutrition. The first, 
would be carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are everything from as complex as starches to simple sugars such as glucose and fruit and, and galactose. So there's first pancreatic enzymes which are secreted into the lumen which break down these complex structures into into di, di and tri di tri and oligosaccharides and then on the surface of the small intestine there are enteric there are enteric enzymes which breaks down these two three or more p bits of pieces of sugars into either smaller pieces into monosaccharides which can be transferred across the cell membrane these epithelial cells transport these individual sugars with a gradient of sodium as as we, we remember sodium is low in the cell because of the pot potassium sodium pump in which sodium is pumped out and potassium is pumped in so there's always a gradient in which potassium wants to go into this or in which sodium wants to go into the cell from the apical membrane on the basal lateral side because there because there's so much sugar inside the cell there's a passive diffusion of glucose into the into the blood into the bloodstream in the lumen which can be circulated through the liver and the rest of the body <coughs> the second part is protein protein once again is chains of polypeptides which are broken up by proteases in the stomach approximately 15 percent is being digested whereas the bulk of the digestions happens in the duodenum and the jejunum after it becomes pieces of after it becomes polypeptides of two three or very few or oligopeptides it can be reabsorbed as well as simple amino acids which are absorbed and for each amino acid there's actually a different transporter or for each class of amino acids there's a transporter for basic amino acids a transporter for acidic amino acids and neutral amino, amino acid and each each of these transports is coupled with also either with either protons or coupled with sodium as well in these cells there's also the sodium potassium pump which creates the potassium or creates the sodium gradient which allows for this exchange to occur and also there's a there's a proton potassium pump proton potassium pump which allows for the conversion or a, or a proton gradient to pull amino acids in the reason it's done in such a way is that even if there's a lot of protein or glucose inside the cell the very presence of a sodium or or proton gradient allows for passive diffusion and for maximum absorption of carbohydrates and protein thirdly there's also the absorption of lipids which are helped by bile acids and cholesterol secreted from the liver and which breaks it emulsifies the lipids breaks it down and allows it to be freely diffusible into the cell there's actually no transporters because inside when the lipids are positive when the lipids are protonated they're actually neutralized and then this allows for free diffusion across the membrane and where they're packaged in the Golgi once again it's a pancake like structure which moves them into structures or lipids that can be pushed further into the lumen and transported throughout the body last but not least there's also amino acids there's also nu nucleic acids which are also individually broken down into their components a g c or t and then or broken down into nucleosides without the sugar and then also transported into the cells which can be used to synthesize products or to be put into the bloodstream so in summary the small intestine is, in, is part of the alimentary tract in which digestion 
absorption and secretion occurs. The small, the small intestine is broken down into three main parts, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum, which serve various functions in both how, prote how different nutrients are broken down and what types of nutrients are being absorbed at certain locations. The small intestine has a huge surface area due to its structure and the rings of, rings of epithelium into and the various ways the epithelium is structured as villi and microvilli with a brush border. In addition to digestion, the small intestine is also respons is responsible for a large part of our immune response because a lot of toxins can come in through the mouth. And these this immune response is regulated by malt or GALT, which are gut or mucosal associated lymphatic tissue, in particular these pyre patches. And there's a, ver a different mechanism for each of the major classes of nutri nutrients. For carbohydrates, they're broken down into basic components and transferred in and transported in with sodi uh, sodium gradient. For protons, they're broken for proteins, they're broken in, up into individual amino acids or small 1-2 amino acid oligopeptides, and they're also transported either with a proton gradient or a sodium gradient. Lipids, which can be which can freely diffuse, are packaged in the Golgi apparatus and then moved into the bloodstream. And nucleotides are also broken down into nucleosides without the sugar and then transported across.